Hey, it's Laura. Welcome to my channel. Today I am sharing a really fun eight and a half by 11 double page spread that I made for my friend. And if you haven't watched the first video where I started this scrapbook for her, I will link that down below. It is my first time ever doing eight and a half by 11 layouts and I am totally smitten. They are so much fun. And for these layouts, I am going to be using my June Scrap My Stash kit. And if you haven't seen that whole series, it is so full of inspiration. I grabbed a ton of things from my stash and challenged myself to use them throughout the month. And I succeeded in using a ton of things up. So this is a layout I'm sharing from back in June using that kit. And first you'll see me put down a couple of different patterned papers here. I've got this really pretty gray and white checkered one. And then I've got the beautiful dark green and gray one. And I'm using that as a, an anchor across the middle of both of my pages. And I love how it's gonna seamlessly tie both of the pages together as if it was one layout that was chopped in half. So you can see I use a ruler to measure out where the top and the bottom of my paper is gonna go. And then I layer up my different patterned paper scraps here to create this anchor and photo mat for my photographs. And the photos I am documenting today are some pictures I took of my friend when her and her husband bought their new house. And I love it. The scrapbook I'm making for her has a couple of big life moments where I've taken pictures for them. So when they bought their new house, maternity pictures, newborn pictures, all that kind of stuff as they've grown their family the last couple of years. So I'm really excited. This uh, challenge has really made me get innovative because there's no way I could use all of these supplies in just my scrapbooking. So I started a scrapbook for my little sister and I started a scrapbook for my friend. And I love how this is giving me more options and more sizes to play with to use up more of my stuff that I wouldn't necessarily use in my own scrapbook pages because they didn't fit a theme that I had. So yeah, you can see I'm pulling out some different embellishments here. I laid down two gift tags. Tags are a huge thing that I was using up in my June Scrap My Sash challenge. And I think four tags end up on this page and I layer them behind the photo mat there across the page. And then I grab that rubber little house embellishment from Dear Lizzie. It's so cute and I've had it for years and I haven't used it. So this was the perfect opportunity since the main color scheme through the album I'm creating for my friend is this tealish color. It's like a teal blue. And yeah, it's perfect. That little house has two different blues in it, including that teal mint and then I grabbed this really cute chipboard sticker that's a mailbox there. And I thought those were both perfect embellishments for documenting them buying a new house and a change of address. And then one of the other things that I was trying to use up a ton of in June were wood veneer embellishments. So I pulled out a ton of tiny little alphabets there. And you can see that I spelled out answered prayers, new home, and a baby. So this photo session I did of them had pictures of their new house and then their pregnancy announcement. And that was really exciting. All this good stuff happened at once. And yeah, it was, it was really awesome. It was a lot of answered prayers all at once. And I thought that was a perfect title since she is a very faith-based person. So I thought answered prayers would be perfect to document her memories like this. And now I am grabbing a chipboard piece that is a suitcase, but it's too big to fit anywhere on my page. So I'm going to cut it in half and use it on either side of my horizontal photo there. And yeah, I thought that fit in with the theme of moving, relocating. And now I'm going to glue down all of those title pieces. 
So you'll see that I actually ended up changing around the words there. I moved the title that I did have on the left page over to the right page and up to the top of the photo mat. And then I moved the one that was on the bottom right page down to the bottom left page. And I'm just using a wet glue to adhere all of those little alphabets down onto my page. And this is one of the reasons why I rarely ever use these wood veneer alphabets because they are such a pain in the butt. It took me so long to glue down each and every one of those alphabets. And I don't make you watch me do all of that. I kind of fast forward and just show you a little clip of it because it was very tedious and time consuming. And now I'm grabbing out a couple of other wood veneer embellishments. I've got some fun asterisks and some little circles there and also a geotag above the mailbox. And I just kind of sprinkle them around my page trying to figure out what looks good. And I'm excited. I used up quite a few wood veneer on this page. I am counting 36 so far on the page, including each individual alphabet wood veneer. And now I'm going through this sticker book that I have full of planner stickers and I'm grabbing out a couple of gold foiled ones to add to this page. I thought that would bring in some more gold because I added two gold foiled tags to the top of each photo mat on each page. And then I also added a gold glitter chipboard piece on the bottom right hand page. So I'm adding a few planner stickers throughout. I also managed to use up a few on this spread and that's very exciting. If you've been watching that June series and I also did another kit and series for using up my stash in July, you will know that planner stickers have been a huge struggle for me because I don't ever maintain planning in a pretty manner. I always end up stopping and I can't consistently plan like that. I prefer bullet journaling. So I have all these really gorgeous planner stickers that I haven't used. And I have really been challenging myself to use them in my scrapbooking now. And I love the way that they add some fun pops to my page. And then I'm going to finish off this page by adding some Heidi Shine. I've got this really pretty green glitter Heidi Shine here. And I don't know how other people make it look so flawless the way they easily get it down onto their page. But I tried smacking it against my finger. I tried shaking it and it turned out a little messy and not as easy as it looks in some videos. But this is what the final result looks like. I love how adding the splatters on both pages just adds a little more interest and makes the page a little bit messy. So here are some close ups of each page. I'm going to move around the page a little bit so you can see how that gold foil reflects. I think it's super beautiful and I love the way it looks with all those different teal colors and the gray and the photographs, all of it. I love the way it looks. And this is the first time I've ever made a seamless double page spread like this that has the same thing across both pages. And I love how it turned out. So I think I will try this again in the future. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the fun, creative projects that I do. And make sure to check out my Scrap My Stash series so you can see my kits that I put together at the beginning of each month using things from my scrapbooking stash and how I use them up each month. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy crafting. I'll catch you in the next video.